Coming up next on Cordisco's Corner. We need to start by fully recognizing the magnitude of the danger. If Mr. Trump is reelected, even under the most optimistic scenarios, the economic and political risk to our country will be innumerable. Hi, folks. Welcome to Chris Goes Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Hi, folks. Welcome back. I want to show you a couple articles from one from Newsweek and one from The Guardian. Um, you know, when you're trying to check out your opponent, what their weaknesses are and how they think, in this case, progressives, Democrats, well, the same thing, progressive Democrats, as we're fighting them for the culture war and politics and all that good stuff, you want to see how they think. Maybe give you some insight on how maybe to defeat them. And found a couple articles here. Give you an idea. A woman tweeted Hitler was better than Trump, and Twitter won't say whether she broke its rules. Now, this is from November of 2020, but that's besides the point. It's the mindset and what these people think. Twitter has yet to comment on whether a now deleted tweet stating that the president Donald Trump is worse than Nazi leader and former German Chancellor Adolf Hitler, whether it broke its rules. Donald Trump is not Adolf Hitler. And this is what she said. Read this part right here. At least Hitler improved the daily life of his followers had discipline and required more of himself to gain the respect of his followers. Even with the same pathology, there are varying levels of competence. Bro, a Bandy X Lee, MD, medical doctor. Now, knowing this, would you go to her for a medical issue? First of all, a doctor named Bandy. I'm not trying to be a jerk here, but if my parents named me that, I'd punch them in the face. <laughs> Maybe that's part of her problem. Remember, it fills you a little off to remember Johnny Cash, a boy named Sue, you know, that kind of thing. This is how they think. Try to put your, and that's the hard part with these nut bars. Try to put yourself in their mindset. And it's It's tough. Lee, who has 91,800 followers, is president of the World Mental Health Coalition. Think about that for a moment. A forensic psychiatrist and a psychiatrist, because MDs, a psychiatrist can dispense medication prescriptions because they're regular doctors, and co-author of The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, a book of essays alleging that Trump is mentally unstable. That's like Ted Bundy telling someone they're mean to their spouses. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just going to breeze through this and we'll go to the other article. Her tweet may have violated Twitter's policies on hate conduct, potentially promoting violence against Trump by comparing him to infamous overseer of the Holocaust, which killed 11 million people. The tweet was published at 10.20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and did it about 12.30, so about two hours later. During its brief life, numerous users accused her of praising Hitler and accurately insulting Trump or being insensitive toward Jews and others killed in the Holocaust. She eventually deleted the tweet because it upset so many people. It was not provoking, though, but the opposite, she wrote. My statement was about how little Donald Trump believed he needs to do to retain his followership, not to minimize Adolf Hitler's autocracies. Um, this first beginning of this is, 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 is the part that really gets to me. 
improve the daily life of his followers. If you saw Berlin in the spring of 1945, you would beg to differ. It was rubble. And there were millions of people just wandering the countryside, completely homeless and destitute. It was, it was, there was destruction everywhere. Absolute. It, it's like a, a movie, an apocalyptic movie, but it was real life in real time. Improves the daily life of his followers. Okay. Well, let's check out the other article here, and you're going to see some really good academic uh, academia at work, so to speak. Let's take a look. And here we are from The Guardian. Now, this is a Canadian professor, I believe. So take that with a grain of salt. I mean, even the most right-wing Canadian is basically a moderate here. U.S. could be under right-wing dictatorship by 2030, Canadian professor warns. Canadian political scientist warns an op-ed of Trump's threat to American democracy and possible effect on northern neighbor being them Canada. Now, that's the thing now, see. Whether Trump runs again or not, it's Trump is threats, people that think like Trump. So we can put that label on anyone we don't like, and that makes them evil. Oh, gosh. Let's read on. I'm trying to give you some insight in how these people think, and I don't know if this is going to do any good or not in, in conversations or discussions or outright arguments. Or you just dismiss them as bat crazy and... You just try to dismiss them the best you can. But the problem is there's 40 odd plus million of these people walking around in the U.S. The U.S. could be under a right wing dictatorship by 2030. A political science professor has warned, urging his country to protect itself against the collapse of American democracy. Yeah, to give that one a double. We mustn't dismiss these possibilities just because they seem ludicrous or too horrible to imagine. Uh, yeah, ludicrous is a excellent way to describe it. Thomas Homer Dixon, <laughs> I'm not even going to go any farther than that, founded, founding director of the Cascade Institute at Railroad University in British Columbia, wrote in the Globe and Mail. In 2014, the suggestion that Donald Trump would become president would have struck nearly everyone as absurd. But today we live in a world where the absurd regularly becomes real and the horrible commonplace. I can say the same thing. In 2006, if someone had said a state senator from Illinois by the name of Barack Obama would become president of the United States in 2008, they would have said, you're absolutely out of your mind. Yeah, and that's the way it works. When people just come out of places from nowhere, honest to God, if when Richard Nixon was reelected, if somebody had said uh, a long-term Congress member who's a stand-up guy, been there forever, good man, by the name of Gerald Ford, be president of the United States, before the end of Richard Nixon's term, you would think you were nuts. And that's the way that works. And not the vice president. Homer Dixon's message was blunt. By 2025, American democracy could collapse, causing extreme domestic political instability, including widespread civil violence. By 2030, if not sooner, the country could be governed by a right-wing dictatorship. Dun, dun, dun. The author cited eventuality centered on a Trump return of the White House in 2024, possibly including Republican-led state legislatures refusing to accept a Democrat win. Um, Trump's got a lot of faults in his personality, to be sure. I am still a Trump supporter, make that clear. But when you see in a, he had a press conference, it was a huge pile of papers, probably about 10 foot wide and about five foot tall on a table, 
all the regulations, all the regulations that under Trump were taken out. When you take away regulations, that means more freedom for people. Hmm. Lowest unemployment rate in minorities in the history of the country means more freedom for them. Now to kowtow to the ridiculous BS of welfare gives them more freedom. Hmm. Giving people freedom is a right-wing dictatorship. Oh, okay. Trump, he warned, will only have two objectives, vindication and vengeance. You know, that part I might go along with a little bit for one simple reason. The vindication, of course, being elected again, because, you know, I've run a local elections and lost, and I've won. And you feel vindicated when you win. You know, I get that. That's just normal. But the vengeance part, you know, how's that go? Revenge is a dish best served cold. He's got some people that he can go back for. And not in a uh, outrageously crazy way like a out of control dictator. There has been, there is people, the progressive Democrats, the leadership, and many other people that have screwed him over so badly Donald Trump has enough of his own faults without making stuff up. Vengeance? About 80%, well, maybe I shouldn't say that high, maybe 50% of the intelligence service. The entire West Wing, just fire everybody and start over. That's not vengeance. That's intelligence. This gentleman is a scholar of violent conflict. For more than four decades, Homer Dixon, (laughs) no comment, said Canada must take heed of its unfolding crisis. A terrible storm is coming from the south, and Canada is woefully unprepared. Over the past year, they've turned our attention inward, distracted by the challenges of COVID-19, reconciliation, and the accelerating effects of climate change. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We need to start by fully recognizing the magnitude of the danger. If Mr. Trump is reelected, even under the most optimistic scenarios, the economic and political risk to our country will be innumerable. This guy's an idiot. I'll just preach through the rest of the article. Then the stage will be set for a more managerially competent ruler after Mr. Trump to bring order to chaos he created. Still through targeted harassment dismissal, he'll be able to thin the ranks of the movement's opponents within the state, the bureaucrats, officials, blah, blah, blah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So this is a little insight into the mind of our adversaries, enemies, slash opponents that really and truly want to take the U.S. Constitution and wipe their ass with it, and we're trying to preserve. That's why they call us conservatives. We're trying to preserve the Constitution, the rule of law, the setting up by the founders of certain fundamental principles. That's what we're trying to conserve. That's why we're conservatives. Well, hope that insight helped. (laughs) Until next time, goodbye and good luck.